Okay, Jessica McKay, Kelly Rowland, welcome yes. to Pretty Smart. Thank I'm you. so happy to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. You're an educator, you're an artist, yes. and I'm dying to know how you two met. Our kids? Yes. School? Yeah. Yes, they became really close, and um, they both loved basketball. Mm -hmm. I think they identified in seeing each other, I think, as yeah. black boys in school That's and in true. class. Titan thought Chase was the coolest kid. <laughs> I came Same. home and talking about how cool Chase is. <laughs> and um, he is a pretty great kid. I mean, his mom is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's how we yeah, met. They brought us together. The kids yeah. did it. Yeah. I feel like you could have collaborated in different ways. Why a children's book? She had a brilliant idea. <laughs> I was experiencing Thank it. You. Like, literally. Yeah. yeah. It, it was our story. It needed to happen. And we were in that world. Our kids were young, you know, three years old. I had probably a five-year-old at the time and a baby. So, mm -hmm. you know, we were just, that was that was our world. So yeah. it made sense to do children's book. Yeah. I actually was gonna ask that because the story felt really personal. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different aspects of motherhood you could have written about. Mm -hmm. And you decided to write about a bond between a mother and a child and the mom goes to work. Mm -hmm. And you call it an ode to modern motherhood. Yes. Which I really liked. I had a working mom and I remember mm -hmm. calling her at, when I got home from school at three, like, when are you coming home? When are you coming home? Yeah. And I didn't realize she must have felt so much guilt. <laughs> you know? Yes. yes. Like, tell me where this story came from in your heart. I mean, it, exactly what you said. It, it is for the working mom. You think about how the world is progressing now. You've got women starting companies and all kinds of businesses right now and how women are being uh, more entrepreneurs and they're trying to figure out this whole balance of my career and motherhood and yeah. relationships and girlfriendships and it's all these different things but the one that's so precious and sacred is the one between your kid mm -hmm. you know when you're away it does take time away from you and this bond that you so beautifully blessed in a way like you know um birth this child to come into this world and they're like yo man you dropping me off <laughs> you know but it's <laughs> it's not just that it's um you know going and experiencing your joy at work as well and sometimes that joy at work does take you away from your time as a mother and trying to figure out that balance for me to this day is still hard yeah you know because our kids want us to be there mm -hmm to wipe the nose, tell them they're great, and they are great, and, mm -hmm. and uh, get them dressed, and the teeth brushing, and like all these different things that mothers do yeah. so just naturally. Yeah. And they crave that, they want that, they deserve that. They didn't ask to come here, we mm -hmm. want them here. We wanna make sure they right. feel as nurtured and seen as heard and heard as possible. So, you know, when you aren't able to be there, that guilt does kick in. Yeah. And so it's an ode to both the kids and the yeah. moms, I'd say, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, exactly. I mean, most children's books, of course, they're for the, the child and mm -hmm. the whole industry. In fact, when we were first kind of pitching the idea, people were saying, oh, it sounds like it's almost more for the adult. And yeah. so we had a little bit of pushback, and so that was tricky. But I think that's what makes it so beautiful is mm -hmm. the adult who's reading it gets you know some of the benefits of easing the guilt, normalizing what their weeks look like they feel seen then the child can, you know they can have this the chorus in there they can have this yeah. conversation and just yeah open up the the um lane for conversation mm -hmm. so that it's um it, it's normalized and it's not this um you know strange feeling the parent and child can get their feelings out yeah um, in a healthy way. Yeah. As I was um, researching for the interview, I realized nothing like this exists. Like there's no language mm -hmm. for what or how to feel when a parent goes to work. Yeah. Like this had to, this had to be in the world. Yeah. 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 That was so important for us. We realized when reading to our, our children, this story is not out there. We have so many books, the kids have books where um, love looks like mom being home with cookies, re you know, receiving you after school, or this is what love looks like when you have a sick day, but mommy still has to go to work. Mm -hmm. And we just said, but this is not what our lives look like. And so, you know, why not just create it? Let's, let's make a book that yeah. tells our story. This is the book that we need it. And if we need it, then chances are other parents, other moms need it too. Yeah. So we did it. Yeah. The Lily, which is um, the female-focused publication of uh, the Washington Post, did a piece on mom guilt. Mm -hmm. 
And they said 57% of moms feel guilty every single day. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Where, what is it? What's the feeling? For me, it, it, it's an emptiness. It's a constant thought of how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. That's how it is for me because with Titan, I was just saying this. Mm -hmm. um, I remember we have our cozy time at night. That's when I, I always say he's like a singing canary. I get whatever <laughs> I want out of him. He's talking and he's expressing himself, what his day was like, his friends, music, blah, 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 blah. And so I just asked him, I said, I talked to him about my schedule coming up, which is about to be a little insane. And I said, it's going to cause me to be away from home. I told him what we write down on the calendar, how long I'd be gone. And so immediately I told Jessica this, his body language turns away from me. We were just cuddling. Mm -hmm. His body language turns away from me. And I said, whoa, what happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I asked him yeah. and he said, well, I don't like it when you're gone. And his voice kind of crackled and I felt so bad yeah. because it is that cozy time that we have. You know, yes, he can get it from his dad. Yes, he can get it from his nannies. But he was, he was, he's a part of me. He's heard my heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, it's, um, it's just a pulse that we have together that is just us. You know what I mean? To yeah. a specific way he likes his oatmeal. I know that mm -hmm. now. A specific way he likes his sandwiches. I know that now. You know what I mean? Like uh, so certain things that we do on certain days of the week. Fun pancake Sundays. That's actually <laughs> something that happens in our lives. Yeah. Like we have pancakes every Sunday and we have people over and that's just the spirit of he and I. You know, and I think that that's every parent with mm -hmm. their child. So that part just makes it feel like, ah, uh, mm -hmm. it's yeah. a, it's a, and it happens. And he does understand. That's what he said. He understood. He goes, I know you have to go to work and that's how you make your money. Yeah. That's what he said. He so understands so my heart. He understands he the money part of it. I was like, as long funny. as you understand, bro. <laughs> but he did understand it. Oh, that's but it's, cool. Yeah, but it's still like. I'm, I'm still going to miss you, though. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. He's like, I miss you. Mm -hmm. So, And it was just that plain and simple. So I was like, Jessica, I got to figure out how to keep him on this movie set with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you navigate what you say yes to versus what you say no to, mm -hmm. knowing that you have something really important that would kind of make you want to say no more than yes? Ooh. Oh, it's easy for me now. I know. think when I was younger, I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want to miss an opportunity. And I still don't want to miss an opportunity, but like, how much does it mean? Like, there's like something I think that's coming up at the school. And I was like, what am I doing this day? They're like, well, you're out of town this day. I was like, well, make sure I leave that night to make sure I'm here for this because mm. I need to be at the school. But the very next day I have to leave. Yeah. So it's like I can pop in and out. But I also have to make sure it's like, where do you need me to be? Mm -hmm. Wherever you need me to be, I'm there. So if can it's on a day that? where something big is happening, I can wave to y'all and maybe wish I was here. <laughs> <laughs> but his need trumps everybody's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It trumps everybody's, for sure. Did Because you have three kids and you yeah. have two kids. Mm -hmm. Did the second and just for you yeah. the third mm -hmm. kid like blow your life up or how did it? Yes. Is it like once you have one, the rest? No, you're shaking your head. <laughs> yes, but it's just, we're probably gonna say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the second and third, it's just, it's so different. I mean, the first that, actually Montreal was just talking about this yesterday, my husband on um, Carter's birthday. When you have that first, there is nothing like that bond because it's just you, you know, the parents and the child yeah. all together. And then as you expand, it's like, it's, family, there are more kids, and so everybody's like taking turns for your attention, for your time, um, and and so there's a lot more um, kind of spreading all of that out, but the first one, you're just doting and like pouring your all into that first, and mm. there's something really unique and special about that. Absolutely. I don't think you No, I'd say so, agree. but for Claude, <laughs> that's runs my that youngest. House <laughs> Claude runs There's the usually house one. Oh, my for my sure. only girl, and she's the youngest. She runs the house. <laughs> you can feel her energy. She's like, no, that's fine. You can leave today. <laughs> Noah is, runs those no, boys. I love Claude. <laughs> um, but Noah is my youngest, and he runs our house. Yeah. So when he came into the world, it was like two feet on the ground, like 
this is mine. Yeah. And and we all had to and fall in some, line. Somehow everyone like listened. They're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh it's yeah, true. I'm listening to this little baby. The sweetie <laughs> will gets the grief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you've mentioned girls. Mm -hmm. I know sisterhood is so important to mm -hmm. you. Do you have that craving to no. try and have a girl? <laughs> no. I can live through everybody else. <laughs> and here's the honesty. Yes, I'm going to say this. I love being the only woman in the yes, house. Yes, that's a awesome. queen. I'm the queen. queen of the house. She's the queen. I can't even lie. They pay reverence. Oh, my gosh. I like that. I and love I, it. Honestly, it's not always like that. No, it's not. <laughs> and to be honest, I do whatever they say. Like, you know, unless it's, like, ridiculous. <laughs> I, I pretty much do whatever they say. It's so like, you watch all the boy movies. I do. Yeah. Over and over again. I can recite every single um, version of Cards <laughs> 1, 2, and 3 and all the short stories on Disney+. Plus. It's just insane. <laughs> so it's like I love these moments that I get to have with them where it's like, Mom, can you? Titan doesn't know the difference between scratch and or from scratch, and but he calls them scratch pancakes. Aww. Mom, can you make your scratch pancakes on Sunday? Sure. <laughs> So cool. um, honey, can you uh, figure out how to make that uh, a burger taco? Sure. Uh, Noah. Mas. Mas <laughs> is bilingual. Noah's bilingual. He's Mas. Mas. Already? Mas, yes. Mas. Okay, Mas. Kelly. So oh, it's so just smart. like interesting how I figured out the, and still figuring out these men in my life. I think that that yeah. for me is like God's humor in my life because I grew up without a father. So here I am learning these three men and these three dynamic characteristics oh. and personalities and figuring them out and I'm raising two of them. Yeah. It's amazing to me. You yeah. know, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. To not have a dad and raise two boys, where do you look? I don't know. I'm really grateful. I have friends who have uh, boys, older boys that have graduated, gone to college. Like That's why I'm saying my circle is my lifeline. Yeah. I'm so grateful because all I can do is pick up the phone and ask them. I've heard you call it your Chico system. Yes. Is that right? <laughs> yes. I have the best Chico system. Yeah. I love so that. So you talk about building a strong group of female friends and you mm. called it the greatest blessing in your life. Absolutely. Mm. Which is beautiful. Absolutely. So I learned, I think, how to be a good friend from my friends, mm -hmm. right? Like somebody would do something for me and I thought, oh, that felt so good. Let me do that for somebody mm -hmm. else. Yes. Is there something that you've picked up on that you can share that sort of maybe helps inspire someone listening to pay it forward? And it's just feeling seen, like checking in, you know, of course, everyone's there for the birthdays, the weddings, the this and that, but really it's that day to day, like, how you doing? Mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. that simple, really. And so now I make a point always with you know new adult friends or anybody in my world how are you mm -hmm. even if you want to send a quick like i see you today i'm sending you a prayer yeah. you know oh. kelly and i do that, that Hers me are chills. So, no there's she's so on time with it really it's amazing how on time her last one your last one mm. I, you didn't, I didn't even tell you but she oh. made me weak because oh. i really needed that that day and that's a blessing to have that in your Chico system yeah. because mm -hmm. you just never know but when it's a spiritual connection mm -hmm. it's like we don't have to talk for two weeks yeah. and we pick right back up okay. yeah and I knew, I was like oh it's, it's real you know what I mean mm -hmm. that because when you're an adult you don't have time to talk. No, you don't <laughs> have time to, talk. to just be on the phone yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, it's true but it's so that's so important yeah. I love I love looking at, I love looking at her pictures on Instagram of her with her family back east. Yeah. It reminds me of like my family yeah. back in the, in the A. So yeah. it's like really cool to see. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've heard you both talk about this as you were promoting the book, that you didn't have books that made you feel seen mm -hmm. when you were growing up. Mm -hmm. And I think so often nowadays we're talking about representation, mm -hmm. which thank God we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. But I think we lose the muster when everyone's like, what does it mean to you to see yourself in a book? What does it mean when you don't? What did you lose by not seeing yourself in a book growing up? Just being reflected in the world, you know, to be seen in, in the world. Like, with all due respect to, like, the books that I did see and those stories were great. It's like, whatever the book was conveying, whether it's, um, you, you heard the message, but to, hear the message and see your face at the same time is like, I can do it! Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's a different kind of 
feeling. And, mm-hmm. and, and I think that the message is great. That's one thing. But when kids can see themselves, like you can see when the kids visit the museum, it's kids of many different shades in there. Yeah. And that was really important to us. It was important to us for, I've ne- to be honest, I've never met a female architect. Mm-hmm. Never met a female architect. I've never met a black female architect. You know that? She Only exists 4% in that of architects mm-hmm. are black women. Yeah. 4%. Wow. It's wild. Wow. So yeah. why not see her in a yeah. book? If, yeah. we, if you've never met her, she gonna right. exist. They say she's she's gonna be. exist. And because you can't become of books. what you don't see. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. perfectly said. You mm-hmm. can't become what you don't see. Yeah. You can. Yeah, it's gonna take just a little bit more, but yeah. it's, it's still. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I love that that was so intentional. Yeah. yeah. Even the subtle, you know, background pictures where we would mm-hmm. have. Serena Williams, like this black woman tennis player, like these nods and odes to some of, um, again, just dreaming big, you can be whatever you want, because kids will pay attention to everything. They notice the illustrations, the younger ones who don't read yet, so they're studying the pictures. And they read books over and over again. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, Like, to me, I remember my first idea of like, growing old and having kids was um, I Love You Forever. Yeah. And that book stays stuck in my heart because of the fact that like my mom read it to me. Mm-hmm. So because my mom read it to me and I'm watching this family uh, like grow old with the baby and everything, I'm yeah. like, this is gonna be me, but with my family. Mm-hmm. But like, it's just, you know what I mean? It's, it was no representation in there, but it was like, it's, it's cool, I'm still gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm but still that's gonna not do easy. It. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. better when you have- You can see it. A pipeline, yeah. yeah. Did motherhood awaken anything in you? A lioness. <laughs> a lioness. Um, What's your sign? Aquarian. I didn't know that I was such a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? Like if like, someone is mean to your kid? Oh, or like, I didn't know. <laughs> if you talk <laughs> crazy to my kid, I'm gonna be like, yeah, you better come the get other your day. kid. Yeah. Like I didn't know. Like I didn't know that that existed. Like <laughs> I, I remember the first time I saw somebody say something crazy to Titan. I was like, yo, who are you talking yeah. to? Like, I, I literally, w- literally was ready for, for And I'm like, and I'm not a fighting type. Yeah. I'm a very peacemaker. But do not mess with my children. Do not mess with my husband. That is the wrong side mm-hmm. of me you will get. And I don't want to even see that person because I've never felt my heart beat mm-hmm. like that. I've never felt my hands sweat like that. I've never just seen red before in my life as I do with my children. I hope that comes out in me. Because <laughs> I think it like, oh, it's so yeah. awesome. What did it bring yeah. out in you? Yeah, for me, it's um, it really is like endless possibilities. Mm-hmm. That's what I think of that kind of came alive in me with becoming a parent, mm-hmm. uh, a mother. It's just, you know, the society there tends to be this narrative of like, oh, you're becoming a mom, so there's the end of your career, there's the end of you know, um, your identity <laughs> as a woman, as, as your own self. But mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I like to flip that narrative and say, actually, if it weren't for my kids and the world they brought me into with children's books, I would have never become an author of a children's book. Or you know, if they hadn't, they, they actually, they'll ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, do you not know I am grown up? <laughs> I think you should be a, an illustrator when you grow up. You're really good at that. You can illustrate your own books. I love her. I know. So That's just cool to endless. see yourself through their eyes. Yes. yes. And to That's see, cool. like, you know, sometimes, but it, I'm butchering the quote, but, like, the idea that we're all born artists, but then somewhere along the way, you know, the world tells us we're not, and so we just drop it. But then to see ourselves through our children's eyes mm. again, it tells us we are, and we tap That's into, cool. so I've tapped into my creative, limitless possibilities yes. after becoming a mom. That's beautiful. Ditto. That's awesome. Did this book make you reflect on your own relationship with your mothers at all while you were writing it? Yes. I like that you said it that way. <sighs> yes. Mm-hmm. I think we're all scared to talk about that our relationship with our moms are complex. Very. Mm-hmm. Why is it it's so hard to say that 
like it wasn't all perfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that it's okay that it wasn't all perfect For sure. because I think that it shapes us. And I think that I remember when I first, and I'm gonna get right back to it, but I, I remember when I first became a mom and I was like, I'm gonna make sure I do this right and that right. And this one woman turned to me, she was like, Oh, sweetie, you're gonna mess something up. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to hit her. And I was like, No, I'm not. <laughs> But, I, but she was like, no, I want you to think about it like this. She was like, if you do everything right, yeah. what is that? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? You're going to just completely stress yourself out trying to get everything right to where if you don't just naturally love them, the, just the way you do, she was like, just just love them. Mm -hmm. Just love them and you figure out your own way. Your kid is, mm -hmm. their thumbprint is just their thumbprint and you'll figure out how to mother them. My husband says that all the time. He was like, you reading all these books on motherhood <laughs> and behavior and all this other stuff. He was like, those books can't tell me about Titan and Noah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's right. Really? Yeah. You know what I mean? He's he's so right. And then Jessica said something the other day, like, it the decisions that we make for them just or it's just in parenthood period it builds resilience mm -hmm. it builds resilience you want to make sure you're figuring it all out but some of that gentle parent it don't work all the time for me and now now we're tight in now we're yeah. tight in. Mm -hmm. now we know who's like i run this house yeah. <laughs> so it's like figuring all of that out but i think that now even after my mom's passing i gave i was able to give her so much grace mm -hmm. because she was doing what she could with the information that she had. And I was able to forgive her and I actually set myself free. Mm. Can I ask you something personal? Please. Were you able to forgive her before she passed or was no. that something that happened later? Later. Mm. When you think about that, is it, do you think that she knows? Like she feels yes. that? Yes, Because mm -hmm. she danced with me in the kitchen. Oh. I know that sounds crazy, but she, she did. It doesn't. She danced with me in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I told you about this story over Christmas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, I'd forgiven her. And like, it was a couple months after that, um, I felt her spirit there, like literally as if she were sitting right here. Mm -hmm. And it really freaked me out. Cause I was like, I haven't drank anything. <laughs> I'm having, like, I'm, I'm really bugging right now. And I was like, if I say something out loud, my husband's gonna think that I'm crazy. And I was just like, I'm just gonna be captured in this moment. I said, mm. suck, cause she's, I could feel her dancing like this on me. <laughs> and she buttoned her mouth like she usually does. And it was, it was like, she was like right here on me. And I said, mama, stop. <laughs> and I said it out loud and Tim goes, what? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, my mom was here. And he was like, oh, I believe that. Like, he was right he there. Yeah, and, and I believe she was just like, we're good. It's cool. It's okay. So I think that just, like, giving them grace, mm -hmm. she, my mama worked so hard. Mm -hmm. She was a nanny. So, like, her working hard, her time was really stretched yeah. then. And her knowing how to be a mother was a whole other set of like mm -hmm. questions and issues and challenges that I've gone through. Thank God for therapy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like, you gotta give them grace. They they just doing the best with the information they got. And yeah. here I, I'm doing the best with the information I have. And thank God I have a tribe who's giving me more information and I'm learning and I'm asking questions. I think that we're, we're not gonna get it right mm -hmm. every single time. So. I read an article that said, it's actually not fair to kids to get it right every single time because no. you're robbing them of their journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like everybody's supposed to have some self-actualization. Yeah. You know, if it's all perfect, what do they have to work on? Yeah, right. and for all those perfect moms out there, good for you. <laughs> I'm definitely not that chick. Like, I'm still learning. So it trips me out when I, I remember some mom uh, criticized me for a seatbelt situation. A whole bunch of moms did. And one mom was so nice in my comments. She said, Kelly, just simply lift the thing up. Make sure that his seatbelt is like this. I listened to exactly, thank you, whoever you were. I listened to exactly what she told me because everything else was noise and ridicule. Mm -hmm. And we don't deserve that. We trying to just figure this thing out as we go. Yeah. It's not like there's a rule book, a handbook on kids, especially a personalized one. And dads don't get that. No. Nah. Mm -hmm. Which is a whole different <laughs> sort of. Nah. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Love y'all, but no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> okay, so speaking of your moms, what was the best advice that they gave you that you're going to pass on to your kids? Mine, it's going to be okay. It's mm. just going to be okay. 
That's so yeah. simple and so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, just really knowing that because um, through throughout it all, my husband and I talk about it. My mom, I grew up back east, but she's she came all the time. My kids are her first grandchildren, and yeah. so she let nothing get in the way. Um, she also happens to be a pediatrician, and so those early months and years with her by my side, letting me know like the hiccups, that's normal, or this oh, little wow. sniffle, the smallest things that would, you know, make any new parent yeah. panic. I think having that kind of peace really helped me. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to your gut. You're yeah. big on that. What? Totally. Mm -hmm. Were you always, or did no. that come later? No, I wish I had known in my 20s. <laughs> I do. Listen to your gut, because I feel like if it's, if it's danger, that's a different kind of gut feeling. When it's like people, that's a different kind of gut mm -hmm. feeling. If it's work, that's a different kind of gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Like just decision making is a different gut feel. Just, but it, it still gives you what you need. And so I listen to my gut on everything and I'm always like Titan. Like if he does something naughty, I'm like, did you think it was a good idea to, you know, cut the screen on the window? <laughs> <laughs> Tell yeah. me that happened. It happened. <laughs> That's you real. Think it was a, Cause he, I mean, I was like, I was like, here's the thing. You thought about it. You went to go get the scissors downstairs. He was like, yeah, but I was like, oh, uh, get the. one second. <laughs> I was like, then you decided to put the snake's head <laughs> through the screen, which made it bigger. <laughs> creative I, though. Yes. So I'm I so, will give him that. So happy he's creative. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but that costs me money. And he was like, my bad. <laughs> he's, he like, knew. he's like, my bad, mom. I was like, ah, oh, dude, you just, I was like, what made you think it was a good idea? I was like, did your gut tell? He's like, no, it, my gut told me it wasn't a good idea. And he knew, he knew it wasn't a good idea. He was just like curious. He just mm -hmm. had to do it. I was like, okay, <laughs> what are you gonna do? He's like, yeah. At least he didn't draw on the walls. Yeah. No, no. We, oh, no, he did. We, we, no, we made a chalk wall. Oh, that's cool. We made a cool. chalk wall. We did that, too. Just in case. I'm like, case. they're going to do they're it. They're going to do it. But just, here's the place. Give, to them, do it. A, give them a place to <laughs> do Not it. Not everywhere else in the house. That's, that, that paint costs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so I told you about the name Pretty Smart, and mm -hmm. so much of it is putting a new spin on pretty. Mm -hmm. And when I think of body image and beauty, I think so much of my mom. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you think of your mom in so yes. many of those ways. Mm -hmm. And my mom has this great phrase that lessons are caught, not taught. Mm. And they just like see you move throughout mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in one of your videos, you had a tattoo that says masterpiece mm -hmm. on your ribs. Mm -hmm. When did you get that? 30. Mm. What was, what's the story behind that? It was when I finally, I felt like I was really finally starting to see myself as a masterpiece. Mm. Um, and holding myself in regard or value as like, watch who you hang around or, you know, what kind of decisions you're making mm -hmm. and, you know, what do you want to start doing with your, like, when it comes to building a business, like, what are you, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And just remembering, like, and also knowing I'm one of a kind, mm -hmm. like, and not comparing myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that at 30, I started to see, like, I don't have to compare myself to anybody. It's only one me. It's only one thumbprint of me. And was like, I'm a masterpiece. That was it. <laughs> I really liked it. Yeah. yeah. I'd never really seen that in a tattoo, and mm -hmm. I thought, what a nice reminder. Mm -hmm. It's also biblical. It is? Yes. It's an, I can't tell you which Bible verse. I need to open up my Bible. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is definitely, it's in a, a Bible verse, and, um, it, but it talks about how God sees us as a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So I said, if God says so, he can't be lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you think about it? Because you have a daughter. Yeah. Do you think about how you're cultivating her body image? Yeah. You know, every night, um, this is why affirmations and you talked, you asked about um, how representation, the lack of representation, what message that sends. And I think it's just, there's, there would be this absence of, 
um, affirmations. So I every night say affirmations with her. Mm. And one of them to your question that I say is I am enough just the way I am. And it's true. It's just you are who you are. Yes. And that's that's all you have to be, just exactly the way you are. That is enough in this world. So and, um, you know, I just hope that she carries herself. I tell her in the mornings, look in the mirror, say something kind to yourself. Because yeah. the way we talk to ourselves, you know, you don't realize how you internalize like that that self-talk sometimes mm -hmm. over time, especially in teenage years as girls, let alone girls with social media. I don't know what that's like being a teenage girl mm -hmm. in the time of social media. So yeah, I try to um, teach her early. We all do my tribe, my husband, we all try to teach her and the boys just to love, love on yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you know that's, that's such a all difference that in this generation. No, it's beautiful to see. Yeah. Like even my so my niece has started a swimsuit line. <laughs> she started. I'm sorry. What? How old is she? <laughs> She's eight. Is she six? She's, She's eight. eight. Okay. My niece has started a swimsuit line. Give her a shout out. I know. I am. I am. I, I love you, JJ. But JJ started a swimsuit line, and so cool. it started from affirmations. Really. And like every day, her mom would take her in front of the mirror, or her dad would take her in front of the mirror. And every day they have to say something with that letter, what, A, B, C, D, I am able, mm. I am brilliant, I am oh, confident, cool. I am. So when she got to the letter I, um, they were like, oh, what are you today? She's like, I'm I. Oh. I am I. And, and, and we, they were like, what? <laughs> she was like, I am I, like everything I am. Yes. And so that's literally the name of her bathing suit company. Oh. It started from an affirmation of herself, like I am mm -hmm. Every, I am I, I am yeah. who I am. And I was like, this is amazing. So watching this new generation figure out who they are at a young age, mm -hmm. I'm like, we gotta be ready. Yeah. Like we yeah. have to be ready now to make sure we continue on that path to, you know, because of course they're gonna have like, you know, their challenges or mm -hmm. they'll fall and we'll be right there to pick them up. Like, let's get back up mm -hmm. to teach them resilience. But like how dope to know already. Yeah at who six and eight who you are. Who you, you are know? and who you're not. It's a blessing. Yeah. Yes. We talk yes. about that. So the other flip affirmation we do is I am not trying to be perfect. Mm. I am not who other people say I am. Mm -hmm. And I am who God says I am. Those are the things. Mm. So she knows not only who she is, but who yes. she's not, not these things of like perfection that doesn't exist. You know, yeah. we talk about that a lot too. That, I've never heard that. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Kelly, you came up in a time where media was pretty brutal for body image. Yeah. I think especially for black women, it yeah. must have been a hundred times worse. Yeah. I remember when you got your breast augmentation and mm -hmm. the internet broke. Oh, yeah. It was, when I looked back at how people wrote about it, I was mm. like, Oh, it's I didn't care. Horrible. Oh, I didn't care, honey. You didn't care? I had a new set of headlights. I thought I was cute. <laughs> I did. You not. were cute. Oh, but yes. I was like mortified at what I was reading. Oh no, they said some crazy stuff. They like, somebody said, "Oh, you didn't you didn't think we would catch that?" I'm like, "I don't care if you caught that or not." <laughs> like, I wouldn't care. Yeah, you I mean, clearly, they were yes. I yeah. was like, "She's here. <laughs> She's get used to it." <laughs> I did not care. For How sure. How do you think about it? Like if you had a daughter, uh -huh. How do you think about it in terms of that? Ooh, ooh. I know, it's a hard How one. old was, oh. <laughs> I was like, how old was I, oh. Um, I was 19 going into 20, Yeah, I believe. I remember you saying like you consulted Tina Knowles. I you did. You consulted some people. I did. Yeah. I was, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> I was very specific as to size. I mean, I was already started, uh, I started off super small, like an A. And um, I'll never forget, the doctor gave me like these different ones to like choose from and I said, hmm, I'm gonna be modest. <laughs> Cause I didn't wanna go to like some old like double D's, like I can't do that from yeah. that. Yeah, and you're so active too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, but I still wanted it to like work for my body, but like okay. should my niece come up to me or my nieces come up to me and ask about it, I'm like, make sure it's a, a decision you've thought long and hard about. Have you talked to your mom and dad about it? Please tell me if you <laughs> talked to them about it before you talk to me about it. But yeah, I would be honest with them. You know what I mean? And I'd ask them, why are you doing it? For me, it was the why, I can't even lie. 
I just thought that they look good. I yeah. was like, gosh, these look great. I just want to take these out for a spin and see what happens. Well, the, the ones that I put in my bra at the time. Mm -hmm. So, was yeah, there, I've heard people talk about like remorse afterwards. No. Did you, you were good. I'm still good. <laughs> Love them. Good. <laughs> Even glad. after my children have sucked on my, my boobs. <laughs> well, you wrote like, about that in your book. Yes, I you did. I loved that. First they were perky and then they said, Let's make them happy again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I, since then I've made them happy again. Yeah. So I just feel like it's just really up to you, like, uh, like the kind of conversation you have with your kids. But they are going to ask you a question yeah. and I want to be honest with my kids if they ask me a question like like that. Is that do you feel prepared to answer honestly I have to with, yeah it's like the other day I came home mm -hmm. and my hair was in a different hairstyle but some of my hair was like covering my wig and my <laughs> my son goes mom I said yes baby he said is is that a wig <laughs> and I said yes why yes it is he goes that look good. And then he continues on. <laughs> so it's just like, it's, he it's just knows. It's just a, just it's a matter know. of fact. They want to know. He sounds like he has such a cute personality. Oh, I love The him. way you cute. described him. I love him. Is he like more like you or like Tim? He's like both of us. He's so like nice. both of us for sure. So I think so much of um, pop stardom has mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. Like I think of Lizzo and Billie Eilish mm -hmm. and Right. Yeah. It's like so much more emphasis on authenticity. Yes. I was thinking, as I was, I was, this is not written down, I was driving here. <laughs> and I was like, if Destiny's Child dropped an album again, mm. uh -huh. it would kill it. Mm. What girl group could you say that about? None. Yeah. Well, there aren't any right now that I know of, with all due respect to any girl groups that are out. Yeah. I did meet uh, one uh, girl group in the studio a while back. Um, but... Thank God for our team that we had in that time because, and our manager that we had in that time, he, he fought really hard for us, like went toe to toe to those labels because um, you, the truth is, is this a lot of bodies present. You know what I mean? As far yeah. as like, it's three girls, it's four girls. Think about Spice Girls was five girls. Mm -hmm. That cost money to, you know, get these mm -hmm. girls around and, I know it wasn't cheap to break a group like ours, but what a blessing. I still get invites to the UK. I still get invites to Spain. I still get invites to all over the world because they laid the foundation in that time, you know, for us to be able to still have shows. I just I just left Sydney a couple months ago. Thank God for that international that presence, outfit. the presence here. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think that broke the internet, too. I mean, oh. That was a great performance. Uh, I had so much fun. I hadn't been on the stage in months. You and looked was, like you were having fun. I had yeah. so, so much fun. You saw it, too? <laughs> yeah, it was so good. <laughs> thank so good. you. But it was so much fun. So I, I think that girl groups are necessary. I, I think that when you see women getting along and they're having a good time or... Anytime you see women together in some sort of public setting, mm -hmm. whether it's us writing a book together or yeah. it's, you know, uh, a girl group coming together to sing a song, it's, I like, I'm so happy that Blackpink is having a moment. Yeah. Blackpink is having a whole moment. Like, my, my nieces come home and they singing all these songs. I was like, gosh, that beat sounds very familiar to something, but they, they've, like, made everything their own. It's, like, so cool to see. So back in the day, I had a friend who said, Kelly Rowland put me on to The weekend. I didn't know, like, I guess they were friends. The with artist, you. The weekend, The artist, back in the oh, day. The and now that you're saying Blackpink, I'm thinking, like, you are st still very much invested in the music industry, yeah. it seems. Yeah, well, I, I love music. Yeah. I love music. I listen to music all the time. It's so funny, I had this moment the other day where I'll, I said, the boys don't really sing, and then Titan comes home, once again, I'm shining. <laughs> so it's like, it's, I still love music. It's still very much so a part mm -hmm. of, of my thread of who I am, so yeah. yeah. It's, you like to break new artists and I love I'm loving seeing new artists. I yeah. mean, it's like it's it's really cool to be able to see new artists come up in like different ways. Like there's this really cool DJ out right now. Her name is Uncle Waffles. And she's like got so much personality. She's um 
from Af Africa or Nigeria, South Africa, I, I can't think of where exactly, but she's so cool. She just played Coachella, but I've been knowing about this girl for at least a year now. I'm like, y'all late. <laughs> so it's really cool to feel like I've known this person since this time. Like I've known about Doja Cat since before everybody caught, caught on. Oh, that's fun. And she's always been that dope, always mm -hmm. been that talented, always been like aside from everybody else. And just, it's dope to watch artists just be that. You know, the Met Gala was last night. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that you didn't come here and do the whole interview in purrs like she did. <laughs> <laughs> that was a moment, though. She was great. Wait, wait, wait. What happened? Oh, she dressed up like a cat, and oh, then all her. the interviews, like she would, someone would oh, ask I saw her. She oh, heard it. it. It was great. It was she, so good. I love her so much. <laughs> she is like. I feel like she t took Lady Gaga to like the night. Like it's like she's doing her own thing. I feel yeah. like Doja is Doja and she is literally in a box all her own. And I love that she was able to dodge the interviews like that. Purr. Yeah. Purr. She just purred. <laughs> meow, honey. You don't get anything from me tonight but meow or a purr. Yes. I love her. It really was. It yes. Was so she's funny. like, I ain't got nothing to talk about with y'all but purr and meow. <laughs> I'm she a cat. became that cat. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> I always hear people ask about like, what was the hardest day? I'm actually more interested in the fun because you've won Grammys, you have played at the Super Bowl, like you've done all the big things. What was the most fun you've had in show business? In show business? I feel like 80 that I called it show business, but like, <laughs> Holly, what is the most She's like, 80? 80. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> show, show, show business, Kelly. Um, um, yeah, what is the most fun you've had in entertainment? You're good. You have so many good questions. Yes. You guys make it easy. Yeah. I didn't even have to look at my cards. You're oh. so fun. <laughs> um, let me see. My most fun day would probably have to be in show business. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get roasted. I will forever call it no, that. No, I'm gonna get roasted. No, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. I'm gonna see him and be like, girl, let me tell you about this show business. Um, but it would probably have to be Coachella, getting prepared for Coachella. Why? Because um, one, nobody knew. At least that's what I thought. But, <laughs> but one, nobody knew. And two, it was so. B had so many bodies, like as far as like the band and the dancers and the this, and, cause she is just that fucking dope. Um, but she had, uh, it felt like college. You know what oh, I mean? You gotta God. remember like, I, I didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. I didn't like, high school was like half of a year for me after that was tutors. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, this felt like, like hearing everybody like walk down the hall, it felt like the high school of visual performing arts or like, you know what I mean? So when we all fell in line and it was time for everybody to like line up and you heard the, the horn section practicing and this person like on this side, it was people like doing the moves and stuff. It just felt like, Homecoming. It, that is fe so cool. it felt like homecoming and, and it felt like a college experience. And that was so awesome to me because I'd, ne I'd never felt that. I never thought about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that was dope. Do you want your kids to have those traditional experiences? If that is what they would like. Yeah. Because right now, Titan looks like he's going to go to marine school or <laughs> marine biology or save the planet with animals in some sort of way. It's all he cares about. And I don't know what Noah's going to do yet. He's too. So I actually have a theory. Tell me, because I'm not a parent. So tell me if this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I think that most people at like six years old know who they are and what they want to do. And then mm. we kind of like go throughout the world. We learn, we unlearn, mm. and then we come back to that in some way. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, all I did when I was a kid was play school and then I became an educator and I tried to avoid it. I tried to, you know, say, I want to be, become a doctor like my parents. I want to do this, but there were different, if you listen to those, like that gut, that instinct, if you're, I think, still enough and silent enough to follow those feelings, mm -hmm. it does lead you back to who who you came into the world as. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, I think there's an element of that that's true. And so it's, I think a lot of like young adulthood or adolescence, if you don't have that yet, is peeling you back and, and returning to that. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. I was the same. I was 
in, in love with music and Whitney Houston and watching television shows and movies when I was a kid. Like the first time I was able to sit down and watch, yes, I know I was too young to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember watching like Harlem Nights. Oh, <laughs> that was, was way too. Late. That's part of show business. I don't think I was. I don't think I was six. <laughs> um, but definitely, like when I was just like, oh, I think I was like eleven, ten or eleven, and I'll never forget just like wanting to watch like all these movies over and over again, and I wanted to sing, and and mm -hmm. and these were the things that made me happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like I. Here I am, like starting off singing with a group, and I'm in my teens, and then you get an opportunity to act, and you know, and I'm like, oh my God, I love this too. So it's just like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like I, you know what I mean? I, I grew up wanting to see, like, mm. like, in in particular, Rudy Huxtable. Yeah. Rudy Huxtable. Yeah. I saw myself back looking mm. like really? yes, and I I was like, I want to be an actress too. Mm. So she inspired me when I was a kid. Um, and to this day, like when I see her, I'm like, that's Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course I say the, her name, of course, Keisha Napoleon, I respect her, um, but she inspired me. She still makes yeah. me geek when I see her. So mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah. And, and I remember the first time I met Whitney Houston, I didn't say a word to her. Oh my I God, I, you, what do you say? I, well, the girl spoke because I remember one of them was like, she's starstruck, she ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> but that's how I felt. It's literally how I felt. Um, and she was the whole, my whole purpose. I'll never forget seeing her in that sweatsuit singing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget seeing that cut with the tie on her head. I was like, I can do it. Same thing with Janet Jackson. Oh my God, yeah. I can do it, I can do it. That's why seeing yourself reflected back to you, whether it's a book or a television, yeah. movies, it's necessary. Cartoons, it's mm -hmm. necessary. It's necessary for every child. You can child. see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That was a perfect full circle mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do some rapid fire. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, okay, the first one is actually really selfish because it's advice. Um, I'm terrified of picking the wrong partner in life. Oh, I feel like it's a make or break decision. <sighs> And I'm wondering how each of you knew. How did you oh, know? Oh man, it, it it is just a, a a feeling, you know. When that person is just there for you, that counts for a lot. Mm -hmm. Always, always there, um, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And when it's easy, I, I will say that. When it's like, I heard someone say this, like the butterflies. That might not always be a good thing because that's like <laughs> alert. That's your body reacting in some ways. It's just easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I knew. Oh, gosh. Um, it was my gut. It was like, don't mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally that, like, yeah. don't mess this up. Because um, he was just, he, he was so ready to share his world with me. Yeah. Like, I, I love my mother, God rest her soul, but our relationship was so tumultuous. And I remember because he and I talked about so many different things, when he looked at me and he said, oh, I'll share my mom with you. Mm -hmm. Like, you can call her mom, it's, it's cool. I was like, oh, this man wants to share his world mm -hmm. with me. Like, how dope. That's and so beautiful. He was just so sweet and um, honest. I'll share my mom with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and when I tell you, like, oh. you know the top of the phone, like where it's like your most important yeah. people, it's me and his mother. I don't, I don't, I, I will share space with that woman. She is just the sweetest, just candy and sugar and maple syrup and everything wonderful all day long. You don't always hear that in terms of relationships with your mother-in-law, that's mm -hmm. really special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's Jackie's really cool. a special woman. She is. Okay, what are you most looking forward to about getting older? <laughs> Even more wisdom. Mm -hmm. Even more wisdom. Um, that knowing in your gut. Yes. Yes, I, I'd say definitely the wisdom part makes me excited. I would say, yeah, I think just a certain level of peace. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this constant moving and going right now with young kids and growing a young family and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm excited for just that level of peace and being able to like then now pass it on to them, watch them grow. Mm-hmm. And they can always come back to you and you're the rock, you're the, the stability and, and mm-hmm. peace of the family. A song that lifts you up. Um, it takes two. <laughs> Not move to that. You can can't you be in a bad that? mood, huh? Can you remix that? <laughs> it's a great idea. Yeah. So there's a cool idea. way to make that beat. It has to be. It has That's to yours. Be. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, a common misconception about fame. About fame? Yeah. Oh, God. You know what drives me crazy? That. <laughs> Sorry, I can laugh at it now. <laughs> Um, that it's a certain pose that one has to have in order to be fly or fabulous. Like, you know, it's always the, <laughs> or the, your mouth has to be like, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, all of mine. that. And it's like, the more I watch people just be the most, like their most fun, amazing self. Like mm-hmm. I, for me, it's like Doja. I love watching Doja. Cause she's just like, you're going to get all this fabulousness, whether it's with, a cat suit or <laughs> lines down my nose. Thing. Like it's just her being so comfortable in her yeah. skin. And it doesn't take a certain pose. It's just, that's what I love about like Lizzo be giving mm-hmm. you all the pose and like all this personality and everything on stage. Like she's just like just so authentic. Authentic. So I just love the real. I, the real. Mm-hmm. And I think often fame, like people sometimes feel like they're getting like the, the real from people, but sometimes it's, it, sometimes it is this mm-hmm. because you don't know how the rest of the world is going to react to what you have to say, what your thoughts are, what your inner beliefs are. Like, it's just sometimes it's just like a, I don't know how to describe it. Mm-hmm. It's just this authenticity. Okay, what is a book that you read that changed your life? Something you think everybody should read? Gosh, it's so hard for me to choose just one. I'm mm-hmm. thinking recently, I love memoirs. Mm-hmm. And so the one I most recently read with my book club, shout out to my book club girls, hey. is uh, Alicia Keys' memoir, More Myself. It's the idea of authenticity. This mm-hmm. theme keeps coming back up, but how can we, with all of our multiple, you know, interests and and pieces of who we are. We're mothers, but we're also women in our careers. We're also daughters. And anyway, how can we keep embracing all of the multiplicities of who we are? And I just, it was one of those things where it's like at the exact time that I needed to hear that, um, I read that book and it was just great. That's good, because that's a recent one too. That's cool. Yeah, Mm. that's the most recent one that's coming to my mind. Oh, wow. Um, I. I feel like the Bible just continues to give to me. Um, the older I get, the more I understand certain things mm-hmm. better than I did even five years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, but I started reading this book with my son and it's called, the, and it's actually for him, but we're reading it together. And we're only on page six, mm-hmm. but so far, Even I'm amazed at just how, it's called the growth mindset. It's like a boy's guide to just growing up. And, but it talked about having a growth mindset and a fixed mindset and how to change that. Um, When you, when you have a fixed mindset, you're looking at something and you're saying, um, uh, what did it say? What did it say? Um, The difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset is a fixed mindset might say, uh, I'm gonna go play this basketball game, but it's not it's not looking good. It's not seeming like it's it's gonna be a great game for me or something like that. So I think we're gonna lose. The growth mindset is I'm not prepared, but I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna try my best. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. So it's like Titan repeated it back to me yesterday when I picked him mm-hmm. up from school. And um, it just made me really happy to know that there's a book out here to get him at the level that he's at and we're reading it together Mm -hmm. and as I'm looking at it and it's saying you get frustrated when you're working hard at something if it doesn't go your way because you care Mm -hmm. and I was like yeah I care (laughs) you know what I mean it's like so and I'm sitting up here reading this children's this children's book and as I'm reading it and I'm going through the sentences I'm going yes oh my gosh (laughs) and Titan's going mom mom 
can you please continue? <laughs> because I'm getting jewels. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's so cool to read a, a book with my kid yeah. and I'm getting jewels too. Hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a blessing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, I do a pretty smart question. Oh, okay. two deck. I'm gonna throw this to you. Yeah. Decks. Kelly, that so one's cute. yours. This one? Yeah, if Thank you just you. wanna open them okay. and pick out a card. I always think people get the card that's meant for them. Okay. okay. So nice. whatever is, okay. whatever feels right. Mine is out of all of the extraordinary people you've encountered, who made the largest impact or left a lingering memory? Ooh. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm so blessed to have so many elders and now ancestors. Um, but yeah, I guess the first one that comes to me is my Aunt Tilly, oh. my great aunt. Um, and mainly because um, I just remember her laugh. She had a very deep, big laugh, her smile. And now that I'm a mother and I'm an adult, I, I can only imagine you know, all of the um, trials and tribulations. And so to, to think about, you know, this woman, a black woman who um, undoubtedly had so much probably going on in life. But as a kid, I just remember somehow she mm. managed to smile and laugh and mm. give us like all these special memories. That's pretty amazing. Not that we should ever, um, you know, hide from our kids what we're really going through. We should always still share, but just remember to kind of like add levity to life and, mm. you know, bring bring joy to it when we can. I love that name, Tilly. It's like too. a smiley exactly. name. It just warmed my I heart immediately, immediately when oh, you said Aunt Tilly. Me you. too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Thank Absolutely. you for the question. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> question everything. Which temptation do you try the hardest to resist? <laughs> <laughs> Which temptation do I try the hardest to resist? Um, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> sugar. It's hard. What's it is, your, oh, what's oh your, anything. Cookies, okay. cakes, pies, candy. It doesn't matter what but it is. But not like gummies. You're more of a like a. No, bakery. I have it all. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just love. But right now, it's these delicious cookies. Uh, they are the most amazing cookie, just buttery. Mm. There's a toffee, white to chocolate toffee mm. one that is just, it is the one hard, th I had one yesterday. <laughs> it is the one hard thing <laughs> to say no to. Sushi, cookies, yeah. you had yes. a good day. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but this cookie in particular. Come back as your kid. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so good. So yeah, that cookie for sure. So I ask everybody this at the end, it's um, intentionally broad. So whatever mm. comes to your mind, the smartest decision you've ever made. Marrying my husband, having my kids. Yeah, I was gonna say something similar. I'll say along those lines, moving to LA, because yeah. that's, my husband was taking this leap of faith, and so it ties into that, the decision wow. to move to LA, which led to marriage and kids for me. And the book. And the book, and, and the all book. of this. The book wouldn't exist without LA. Exactly. So true. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, I'm gonna do a giveaway, but um, I just wanna impress upon people how impactful the book is, mm -hmm. um, even as a person who's not a parent or a kid. So I'm not the target demo. <laughs> um, I read it several times. I think it's thank really, you. really beautiful. So thank you for putting it out thank into the world. You. Thank you so thank much for sharing you. it. Yeah, thank, thank you. You guys made that so easy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you You're made so it so easy. Fun. I totally made it you, so easy. You asked thank the best you. questions. Yeah. And poor.